Are you ready for more? Are you ready for more? Four, three, two, one. All right, we're going to do more tomorrow. Every 10.30 a.m. here, we have Church Unusual. And some of you are scared. Is this church? That means it's been a long time since you went to church last. Church has changed. The church you are used to is... Three go. Church has changed since. When did you go to church last? that you will sleep off. Give your neighbor a half and say, church has changed long time ago. Church is the most happening place in town. I thought I will get a better response. Church is the most happening place in town. If you are not connected to a church unusual like this church, you are a bush guy. You are a bush girl. Are you doing with your life? Kai. To fear back. Kai. Ay, 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 ay. Amen. Are you ready for some word? Oh, we've been having a glorious time today. All right. Now, let me just say this. We are going to have um, the first two services after the convention, of course, the, throughout the month. The first two services, um, we're going to be dealing with principles that will help you to end the year 2009 on top. If you want to end on top, shout hallelujah. Let heaven hear you. Hallelujah. And then, on the third service is going to be the power of music. Woo! Uh, just thinking about it, I feel like I'm in cloud nine, going to 14 already. The power of music. It's going to be ah, fantabulous. Glory to God. But today, we are still going to have a powerful dance group come up. Steps of Grace are going to still come and dance and they're going to dance to the glory of God just like David danced. And then we are going to have a drama from Alpha Sule. They are still going to be here again. Those of you that know them, you are celebrating and clapping already and it's going to be glorious and then 4 p.m all the ladies all the i thought i'll get more ladies excited all the ladies without the ladies this world would not be colorful without in fact, without ladies there will be no world itself the first world war would have wiped everything out. I'm talking of the one that happened. Okay, let me leave that one. But it's going to be awesome. And then tonight, Reverend Dr. Glenn Arekion. He was tired yesterday. That was why he didn't preach to Yes, he was tired. Now he has rested. I was talking to him yesterday and yeah, I won't tell you. But tonight, oh my goodness, it's going to be awesome. Give your neighbor another high five and say, it's going to be awesome all day long. I want to share with you because we are in the season of football right now. We're in the season of soccer. Um, the nations of the world under 17 they have come to Nigeria and um, the hostilities have been on. Let me just say this. I like football, but I love Jesus more. I thought I'd get a good amen. 
I like football, but I love Jesus more. I love Jesus more than soccer. Because soccer is not our savior. Jesus is our savior. Can I have an amen, somebody? Hallelujah. If I'm to choose between football and Jesus, there's no contest. I will not even think twice. It is Jesus. If you are to choose between football and Jesus, who will you choose? No, let everyone hear you. If you are to choose between football and Jesus, who will you choose? Why are you whispering? Shout his name. Who will you choose? However, the Bible says that the things that are visible, they speak to us of the invincible God. And God has left a lot of illustrations, a lot of images, a lot of um, practical things on the face of the earth that you can use, and from it, it, they will teach you things about the living God. Please, I want everybody to be seated. Nobody roaming around, moving around, etc. I want everybody seated. All those who are outside, let them come in. Whether they are young, whether they are old, whether they are middle aged, whether they are in their hundreds, doesn't matter. Let them come in. The word of God is for all of us. So, what of the things that I believe God has left on earth for us to use to learn about Him? is sports. Sports. Actually, I don't think we'll play sports in heaven. No, I don't think so. But, I see that sports was used to teach us about heaven. Paul did that a lot. Paul talked about running race and it spoke when he was speaking. If you're a Bible scholar, you know that he was actually using illustrations of the Olympics that the Greeks started. The ancient Olympic games and, and a lot of sports are involved and he talked about playing, running too. So today, I want to share with you. Take a pen and paper and write down. My message is titled Playing to Win. Playing to Win. I have some balls here, some soccer balls here. Some people go for competitions and they say, and I don't like this statement. When Nigeria goes somewhere to play and they say, we only went for the experience. Or we go for Olympics and they say, we are going for the experience. Stop wasting taxpayers' money. Don't go for the experience. Go to play to win. Amen. Your life Brethren, brothers, sisters, ladies, gentlemen, your life is like a game. You are either winning or you are losing. Right now, you are either a loser on the path of losing or you are a winner. You are a champion. You are winning right now. Your life right now is like a game. And I want to pick out of all the sports, I want to pick the sport of football. Use it to think about your life. It's a serious issue we are dealing with right now. I'm, I'm talking about right now. Think about your life. And think about the game of football. Game of football has a duration. How long is regulation time in football? Talk to me. How, how long? 90 minutes. Nobody knows the day you will leave this world. Our prayer is 